and what's and why's and wherefores. Here you'll find your what nots and therefores. So come on along, let's find out what's going on. Where's and when's and who's and what's it's. No matter what your taste, you can trust it's the place where you can find all your new Disney news. No matter what you taste, you can trust it's the place where you can find all your new Disney news. Welcome to the Sweep Spot Current Events Edition, June 9th, 2023. All right. Glad to be here. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting caught up on what's been happening at Disneyland Resort as we do every couple of weeks. And this time, I'm happy that we're welcoming back our Patreon supporters in our live chat to contribute their thoughts on what's happening at the resort. That's right. Um, Jen, Ken and I are former Disneyland Custodial cast members, and we talk about Disneyland. And we also host the number one Disneyland podcast hosted by two former Disneyland custodians. And Number also, one. <laughs> <laughs> also wanted to mention that this is we do two types of shows on this feed, the sweep spot. It is uh this is our current events edition, as I had said, and we talk about the latest in Disneyland resort news. And then we have our main topic, which comes out on the other weeks where this doesn't come out. And um so usually every Friday there'll be one or the other. Um and uh so you can look for this usually late night, Friday night for current events, uh, early Saturday morning or um, Friday afternoon for the main main topic show. Um, we are also authors of the books Cleaning the Kingdom. We can get those signed copies on our website at thesweepspot.com or you can get them non-signed at Amazon. You can get digital copies on uh you know, where Kindle books and digital books are found and our audio book, uh, both editions of our books are on audio where you find audio books, audible and all that. Um, iTunes, I think has them too. So our Apple audio books, um, if you want to help support the show, we'd really appreciate it as things keep going up and, um, we are trying to produce better and better shows. Um, you join our Patreon for once a month. You get one bonus episode delivered to you, and you can join us once a month for our current events live edition, where we record live and you're in the chat room, leaving uh, just kind of having a conversation with others in the chat room, and then we'll read some of the comments to um, within the show, and it's a lot of fun. So you can join that by going to Patreon and searching the sweep spot, or you can go to our website thesweepspot.com and click on the Patreon link and that'll take you there also. Um, wanted to mention something real quick that, um, you know, I work at Concierge and I book Disneyland vacation trips and uh, not just Disneyland, I should say Disney and uh, also Universal. But I'm um, going to talk a little more about that uh, later in the show. And um, we're also going to welcome uh, Lindsay, who is the uh, current president at concierge right now and we're going to talk a little bit about concierge and why you should uh, book with concierge and some of the things we can do and some of the changes that have gone on. so um, looking forward to that discussion and we're going to have that before we get into the current events Okay, so for this next segment, I thought it'd be a good idea to bring on um, someone else from Concierge because I always talk so much about Concierge here on the Sweet Spot. And I thought, who better than the now president of Concierge, Lindsay? Welcome, Lindsay. Thanks. Hi, Lynn. Hi, everybody. Yeah, so I I think I've been talking about this for a while to have you on, and um, here it is. It's happening. So... Um, I wanted to ask you, how did you get started at concierge? 
So I have been with concierge for four and a half years and mm -hmm. about five years ago, I didn't even know that, that Disney travel agencies existed. And then I actually learned about concierge from the sweep spot because oh, cool. I listened to you guys back then. And I remember you had Mike, the founder of concierge on Mm -hmm. And we were like, my family was planning a Disneyland trip. And I was like, oh, I wonder if they can get me a deal at the Disneyland Hotel, my favorite place to stay. So I sent an email and ended up talking to Mike and it snowballed from there. And I ended mm -hmm. up joining the team. Awesome. Well, so you, so you said you hadn't heard of any, like that there was a travel planning planners for Disney at all. Yeah, no, I mean, I knew that there yeah. were like travel agents yeah, out yeah. there, but I didn't realize that there could be like Disney specific ones right. until I was listening to the sweet spot and I heard about it. And I think the big difference between like Disney specific travel agencies and just anyone else out there is that the Disney agencies are staffed with people who are super passionate with Disney yeah. love and yeah. they it's like a very specific niche vacation, right? But there's mm -hmm. so many things to keep track of and things are always changing. And it's really fun to work with people who like get that and are yeah, super yeah. into it so, so that they can, you know, we can help you know everything you need to know to have a super magical vacation. For sure. And it made me think, and I've never thought this before. So when I, my first time to Walt Disney World was for my wife and I for our honeymoon. And that was in 1999. Well, we went through a travel agent that just was near my mom's work. And I went, all right. And so, and when I went to Walt Disney World, I was totally unprepared. Not, I'm not blaming her, but at the same time, it wasn't someone that specialized just in Disney. So I was not prepared in all these different than how big it was and, and anything. So, um, and there wasn't the internet where you could go on and watch YouTube videos and all that then. So Yes, it's definitely important to have someone that knows the ins and outs of the Disney parks and especially that specific park you're going to go to. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Because they're all different. I mean, booking Disneyland to Disney World, there's there's different things. Some are similar, but some are different. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think a lot of people just assume like, oh, we've been to Disneyland. Disney World will be just the same, except bigger. Mm -hmm. it's not really. It's a lot more complicated. And we do, you know, Disney Cruise Line, Aulani in Hawaii, Adventures by Disney. So there are a lot of different destinations kind of that we keep up on. Right. Well, let me ask you this. Why should someone book with us over just <clears throat> going on Disney's website and booking the trip themselves? Like, what, why should they book with us? I know the answer, but I want to hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Good question. I feel like a lot of people who contact us for the first time ask like some version of this. It is a very valid question. It's a good one. But so we quote you the same prices that you would see on Disney's website, whether you are booking hotels or tickets. We also keep up on all of the discounts and stuff. So we would know right away if, you know, there's a better deal out there and we can kind yeah. of plug you into that. But, but the real benefit of working with us is just having our expertise and having us like in your back pocket whenever you need us. Yeah. So it, I always say it kind of depends on the family that we're working with or what we right. provide them. If it's your first time, you know, and you don't know anything about the parks and you're taking your kids, we yeah. can kind of hold your hand and, ex you know, come up with like a strategy for your park day. So you're not waiting in line the whole time. We can help mm -hmm. you find places to eat so that not, you know, you're not dealing with hangry kids melting down. Yeah. Um, or for more seasoned Disney people, sometimes a lot of my clients are just like, you know, we've been to Disneyland a bunch of times, but I just don't have time to like research and book the restaurants and stuff. So mm -hmm. Lindsay, can you just make my dining reservations for me and tell me when to show up? And I'm like, got it. No problem. I will take care of you. Yeah. And the important thing I try to stress is that we don't charge for our services. Um, you know, we don't get pay you know it's not included in the price or anything is it's totally free to the to the client um a lot of people think yeah. that or they, yeah. they that's think, one thing i think a lot, yeah. of, a lot of people don't realize right and it's not the case people don't always realize that it doesn't cost anything extra because the price disney has actually already built it into the price of every disney vacation package mm -hmm. so 
I mean, technically everybody's already paying for it, whether they use it or not. So you might as well. Yeah. Disney already has enough money. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Because that money's got to come in there somewhere. Um, So also, so another question is, why is concierge different? Because there's a ton of other travel planning companies and I see them pop up, you know, on Instagram, different places, but why concierge? We have a really unique like culture within concierge. We're a smaller agency and we really value like teamwork and working together. Mm -hmm. Um, And we also place like a big emphasis on training and making sure all of our travel planners are not only helping you with the logistics, but like helping you figure out what will make this trip the best and like most successful for your family. And then we can go from there. And all of us are like so dedicated to Disney. I mean, we all love it. We all travel with our families. You obviously are such a Disneyland expert (laughs) and like becoming a Disney world expert. I think you have such a unique view too that you can kind of give the people who work with you, like the inside look at how Disneyland works, which I think Mm -hmm. is something super cool that not everybody can do. Well, thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I also like to, to tell people that I, I, you know, I'm available. Like you, I think you'd mentioned earlier that um, like they have a problem when they're on vacation. I had someone, their scooter, um, their personal one broke on them at Disneyland and they actually, threw it away because they didn't want to even deal with it it was so old so they needed a scooter and they asked me if I could get it for them and I did and it was sent to their hotel and they had it within I think it was like 45 minutes they had a new scooter so wow that's amazing yeah, yeah see that's something else too even you know our services right. don't stop when you leave on the trip you can still contact right. us while you're traveling we check in with you when you get home to make sure everything went okay so we're there for the whole thing yeah, I always, I always like to say, it's not like we just book your trip, say, have a good time, you know. <laughs> That's true. And there are some travel agencies out there that do that. They like book you and then you're just sort of on your own, but right. not at concierge. Yeah. Never on your own. <laughs> so right now there's a bunch of things going on. I know that I had just booked some uh, vacations for Walt Disney World because those dates for 2024 just opened up. Yes, very exciting. Yeah. And Disneyland soon, right? Is that usually sometime in the summer? Hopefully, yeah. Last yeah. summer, I think it was like August. Okay. So I don't know if I'll have to wait that long, but yeah. hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we'll hear more. Yeah, I've had people ask me, I want to book for next year. I'll let you know. I put them <laughs> on a list. So so yeah, if you want to book for 2024, just let me know and I'll put you on a list. And when it happens, we'll get things rolling. I think um, at Concierge also, like, it, it doesn't matter which destination you're doing, whether it's a cruise or a Lani or, you know, Walt Disney World, there are always so many new things happening. Like Walt Disney World, they just said for 2024, they're bringing back the dining plan, mm-hmm. which makes that those vacations feel kind of more all inclusive because you don't have yeah. to be worrying about like, you know, paying for every Mickey ice cream bar and meal and stuff and then um like with disney cruise line they're celebrating their silver anniversary at sea this year so they have yeah. like they yeah. always do fireworks at sea but this year it's yeah. like a new and improved fireworks show and they've got like different character stuff going on so i think that's one of the funnest parts about disney trips is things are always changing so even if you've done yeah. one before there's always something new and no reservations for 2024 for walt disney world yeah Yes, that's yeah. good news too. Oh, it's gonna yeah. be so nice. Yeah, and that was something Ken would always talk about on on here. I would say, you know, let concierge take care of you because it's so complicated nowadays. You know, we had reservations, we still do for Disneyland. Um, you know, let us do the hard work because it is kind of confusing and um just yeah, it's just easier yeah. to do it with concierge. <laughs> And even though they're getting rid of like the park reservation, so that's one less thing we have to worry about. But yeah. I mean, there's still so much like figuring out virtual queues. There's the new mm-hmm. Tron ride at Walt Disney oh, yeah. World. Can't wait in line for. You have to get a virtual queue or use Genie Plus. Like that's a thing that we explain to all of our clients because it's a little complicated, right? <laughs> and it's different at Disney World. A little mm-hmm. bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Well, 
thanks for coming on, Lindsay. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is fun. Everybody book with Lynn. He's great. <laughs> Thank you. Looking to book a vacation to Disneyland Resort, Walt Disney World Resort, Disney Cruise Line, Disney Alani, Disneyland Paris, Adventures by Disney, Universal Studios Hollywood, Universal Studios Orlando, then I can do that for you. If you contact me and we can talk about all the different options and dates and we can kind of even make recommendations on which days might be the best for you to go. And also as a complimentary, when you book with us, we will book your dining for you if you'd like, special events. And we also, when we book a vacation for you, we, we just don't say have a good time after we book it for you. We are there every step of the way. We contact you before your trip to make sure everything's squared away. We even have a checklist to make sure that you have everything you need. Reservations, dining, all these different things. Um, your transportation, if you need help with that from the airport. Any of those sort of things, we can help you with that too. We want to make the vacation the best it can be for you. Because I know that vacations aren't cheap and we can help you do that. So if you contact me, that's Lynn and the email is L. Baron at concierge.com. That's L B A R R O N at concierge.com. Or you can go to the sweepspot.com and there's a link on our front page there. You can click on that and there's information on how to contact me. But I'd love to talk to you and help you book the best vacation possible. Now we're going to have the current events. Ken, what do you have for us? Oh, Lynn, well, I wanted to point out uh, that we do have our Patreon supporters joining us in the chat room again. Yeah. So jo join our Patreon and you'll be able to join in on these chats and give your feedback as we are recording. So that's great. And it works now. It, it, it's working this <laughs> time. Um, it's always a lot of fun to do this. So uh, we will be soliciting their comments and we'll be adding them to uh, what we cover here. I did want to point out our friend, you know, we get people asking us about this. Our friend Jim Corcus, recurring, very popular recurring guest, uh, author, Disney historian. You know, he's been dealing with some really severe health issues. Uh, he really, really has been feeling down because he, he wants to, you know, do some more Disney history. Um, so there's a GoFundMe now for Jim. Uh, we will have that on, on our uh, website, um, so you can click through. It's uh, we've uh, put it on our social media and that sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. Disney historian Jim Corcus needs your help. That's the headline of of the GoFundMe. So uh, if you want to contribute to that, uh, any little bit will help because um, he's got some serious bills and yeah um, yeah it, it the gofundme also it kind of goes into more detail about what's it explains going what's going on, on. Mm -hmm. yeah so yeah because that's been people have been like you know what what happened what you know mm -hmm. how's he doing uh so go check it out and uh if you're into prayer or positive thoughts or whatever <laughs> please yeah send some gems way um anyway so with that out of the way, uh, I don't know if you realize that uh, Splash Mountain's been pretty important to me. So I'm leading off with a uh, the story, Splash Mountain Faithful Turnout for Last Rides on Attraction's Final Day at Disneyland. Uh, and if you go back and you listen to our previous current events episode, which, which, you know, a couple weeks ago it came out, you can hear about my last ride on Splash Mountain very special uh, special trip report go back and listen to that for free but this one this story is from the orange county register it's from brady mcdonald and uh, brian rocos and uh as they say in the article which was came out on may 30th which was the day it closed um the article does say splash mountain wait times were modest in the 30 to 60 minute range early tuesday morning you know, the last day as a light rain fell on the Anaheim theme park 
and temperatures remained in the low 60s under May gray skies. By 2.30 p.m., the wait had grown to three hours. And as we uh, were discussing, Lynn, they, they went old school with the direction of the line. It went out, you know, yeah. past the Haunted Mansion and, you know, kind of along the river there. Um, at 5.45 p.m., the park stopped using the single rider line. And by 6.15 p.m., the wait time ballooned to 230 minutes or nearly four hours. For context, the wait time, the wait for phenomenally popular Star Wars Rise of the Resistance was 95 minutes and Space Mountain was 100 minutes. The Splash Mountain queue stretched to the entrance of the Haunted Mansion shortly after rope drop. When the park opened, fans sprinted through the Adventureland entrance at 8 a.m. rope drop to be the first in line to ride Splash Mountain on the last day for the attraction. Early riders made it through the, the queue in under 20 minutes before the line stretched to 65 minutes. Paid Lightning Lane skipped the line passes were still available for Splash Mountain at 10 a.m. Uh, Tuesday, but but they were going fast. The single rider line was available for those looking to shave a few minutes off of their wait times. I wonder if any of our Patreon supporters were there on the last day. Uh, it was the day after Memorial Day. Interesting day to close. It was a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. um, it was interesting to see social media that day. People were posting videos and pictures and uh, Tony Baxter was there. Um, yeah. He was there with, uh, you know, a group and uh, he had a VIP escort and people were getting pictures with him. People were photographing him as he was going by. Uh, <laughs> of course. Yeah. One guy tweeted out, he goes, oh my gosh, I was within 10 feet of Tony Baxter. I can't believe it. Um, <laughs> but uh, the Lopez uh, twins, the brothers uh, yeah. from the NBA, you know, very tall. They mm -hmm. were there as part of that group, so it was kind of easy to spot them because they're so tall. <laughs> but uh, people, I saw people were, you know, shouting out thanks to Tony and cheering him, oh. and people were there when the barn doors closed oh, and uh, so sad. taking taking pictures of the last logs going down. You know, so um, yeah, yeah. Had, there's a couple comments about it. Um, Christine said that she was uh, her last ride was one week be one week before closing. Uh, keeping Walt and Disney said his last ride was on April fifteenth, um, but it won't be my last ride on Splash. Okay. Uh, John said the sign came down today. Yeah, they they marked they put they put stickers on things they were going to remove, um, mm -hmm. you know, and the next, you know, the next overnight and the next day and all that sort of thing. So, um, that, think that, that stuff will be underway. auctioned off or maybe, I don't archives, know. Or? See, it's, it's, there's a question about that because do they want to make money off of it? Yes. You know, <laughs> considering why they're close, considering why they felt it necessary to change it. Oh, I see what you're saying. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, it will be missed for sure. Uh, I wish it didn't have to be that way, but... Um, it's still at Tokyo Disneyland. They yes. still have theirs. There's been no announcements as yeah. far as, as the Tokyo version goes. Um, yeah. The micechat.com, uh, Mike Kendrick, has a photo farewell to Splash Mountain. And uh, as he points out, now that Splash Mountain is closed to transform into Tiana's Bayou Adventure, which is supposed to open in late 2024, we're celebrating the legacy of Disneyland's Wettest Mountain one last time. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, um, by the way, as always, the links to all of these stories will be at our official website, thesweepspot.com. So you can click through to get them in their entirety. Micechat.com always has a lot of really large photographs, <laughs> you know, yeah. so uh, you can get a good look at everything. 
Well, speaking yeah. of uh, some of the comments, uh, you know, someone said that's sad. Um, he said, yeah, some of the things are marked to go to the archives. Um, John said, maybe Tony Baxter shipped the sign to Ken's house. <laughs> Ken would put uh, yeah. it on the front of his house if he could. Tony, I think Tony would keep, if Tony can get his hands on those things, I think he would keep them. Oh, yeah. Like I've, the uh, yeah. like the, the, the wood sculpture of the three characters. Oh, yeah. I mean, where's that going to go? I'm, you know. Uh, keep, keeping Walt in Disney said what he meant is he'll be visiting Tokyo in July. Oh, yeah. well, that'll be nice. We'll have to hear about that. Yeah, definitely give us a report. Yeah. Well, All right. shortly after Splash Mountain was closed, um, new details came out about Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Um, the new details were that, haha, just kidding, we're not actually doing it. Splash Mountain's just going to sit there for 10 years with a sign that says, close to Imagineer, a brand new attraction. No, <laughs> no, no, they're not doing that. Um, they actually, uh, MiceChat.com had a uh, new details story. Uh, Tiana's Bayou Adventure will be based on Disney's animated film, The Princess and the Frog. Well, actually, I'd like to put that as an aside. It's going to, it'll be based on the characters, but it's going to be after the movie. Uh, the upcoming ride promises to whisk visitors away into the bewitching realm of New Orleans jazz and a mystical bayou teeming with whimsical and musical critters. Let's take a look at what's known so far about the story, characters, music, imagineering process, and concept art and details of Tiana's Bayou Adventure. They've really been, there's been a lot of... Uh, publicity about the process and the research and mm -hmm. uh you know uh additional music they're gonna have and the artists behind that uh so that's kind of interesting um it's expected to open in 2024 the magic kingdom version could be open as soon as summer which would be nice uh, yeah. while disneyland will follow suit later in 2024 but uh, it'll say, uh, they say here in the My Chat story that um, it'll take guests on a journey that unfolds after the events of the original film. Following the success of Tiana's Palace Restaurant, Princess Tiana ventures into a new culinary endeavor called Tiana's Foods. According to the story, Tiana has nestled her business within an old salt mine this unique enterprise encompasses a multifaceted space that includes a boutique farm a working kitchen and an educational area aimed at teaching the art of cooking and gardening to visitors of all ages tiana and her dedicated colleagues at tiana's foods also create delectable products including their very own line of original hot sauces, adding a touch of spice to their culinary offerings. As guests make their way through the queue, a period radio program fills the airwaves with nostalgic music, which, you know, sounds like a little bit like Jungle Cruise, mm -hmm. uh, um, occasionally interrupted by an urgent message um, from the radio host. Tiana is in need of assistance for tonight's party, and those willing to help are encouraged to head over to Tiana's Foods. The enticing scent of freshly prepared beignets, Tiana's signature dish, wafts through the attraction queue, immersing guests in the culinary delights they are about to experience. Upon arriving at Tiana's Foods, visitors are greeted by a vibrant display of artwork created by local artists setting the stage for the grand finale, an extravagant Mardi Gras party. The entire facility buzzes with activity as preparations are underway with plenty of Tiana's famous beignets in sight. However, a mix up in the party arrangements unfolds. Of course, something goes wrong. It's always you have to have something go wrong and a vital ingredient goes missing. Hmm. Guests are invited to join the adventure and help locate the elusive item. But in this magical world, um, ingredient may not refer solely to food. 
So the adventure reaches its climax as guests encounter the mystical Mama Odi, a bewitching force who alters the course of the voyage. Mama Odi serves as the catalyst of magic within the ride, showcasing her remarkable abilities before delightfully laughing alongside guests as they float by. Throughout the attraction, guests are transported to an enchanting evening in the bayou, surrounded by the sights and sounds of its vibrant wildlife. Spanish moss gracefully drapes from the trees, while aquatic grasses and weeds reach skyward. The canopies of cypress, oak, and magnolia trees create a captivating ambiance, complemented by cypress um, knees emerging from the water. Lily pads adorning the surface, and a variety of bayou plant and animal life abound. Hmm. So, yeah. Uh, the the journey is brought to life by a multitude of all new audio animatronics figures featuring native animals such as otters, rabbits, raccoons, beavers, opossums, and frogs. These resourceful critters ingeniously fashion musical instruments from their natural surroundings, forming a delightful part of the adventure's musical backdrop. Mesmerizing lighting effects illuminate swarms of fireflies, which will guide guests along their path with their ethereal glow. The fireflies will lend an enchanting atmosphere to the journey, adding an extra touch of magic to the bayou adventure. While a scene-by-scene -scene description of the ride has not been shared by Disney, clues suggest that, an, that after a thrilling drop, guests will find themselves in a jubilant Mardi Gras celebration at the conclusion of the ride. Princess Tiana herself, Disney legend Anika Noni Rosa, stated, or Rose, um, stated, it is really exciting to know that Princess Tiana's presence in both Disneyland and Magic Kingdom will finally be fully realized. As passionate as I am about what we created, I know the fans are going to be over the moon. The Imagineers are giving us the Princess and the Frog Mardi Gras celebration we've been waiting for, and I'm here for it. So, there you go. Pretty extensive in the description. Yeah. <clears throat> I did want to say that, you know, I seem kind of negative towards this but i'm not i just i just don't like change and splash mountain change, was something... change takes some getting used to doesn't it yeah <laughs> you know and and splash mountain was um i remember splash mountain there more than i remember without it you know yeah i mean although you know i grew up going to Disneyland when i was young but i my memory is i splash mountain has been there longer so uh Actually, it has been there longer than it wasn't um, to me. Yeah, at our the time that we, yeah, you know what I mean. But, but I am positive about it. I, I do hope that it, it's really good and successful. And I think Imagineering hasn't really let us down too much in the past. So I, I, I have high hopes for it. You know, so yeah. Well, one of the things that I pointed out about the legacy of Splash Mountain mm -hmm. was that. Uh, now, T, you know, Tiana is going to have, I mean, what are the odds uh, that there would have been an attraction this big for the Princess and the Frog? And let's let's mm. say they decided we're going to do a Princess and the Frog attraction. Um, you know, what would it have been? I, I, if they had to do it from scratch, I highly doubt it, it was going to be a 10 minute uh, flume ride. You know, with uh, with yeah, with five drops. You know, <laughs> a boat ride kind of makes sense, but like a dark, but a one this big type. This one yeah. big. This one, uh, you know, a, a boat ride this big and prominent. You know, they no, they probably yeah. wouldn't have done that. They probably wouldn't have done that. So, you know, that's part of the legacy of Splash Mountain is that Prince, you know, Tiana and the characters from Princess and the Frog are getting a big attraction mm -hmm. yeah yeah well i hope it does let well me know if, let me know if anything's it. going on in the chat room so um oh lots of stuff um 
they're having a grill time in here. And, uh, st- st- stuff we can actually say over the air, you know. Yeah, uh, <laughs> well, uh, Keeping Walt and Disney said they've already recorded a new railroad spiel as you enter the tunnel crazy fast. Uh, Dusty at my chat, Christine said Dusty at my chat said the March Twain also had the new spiel the next day. Yeah, yeah it seemed like no, they, they were ready for this. They, it, they were ready. They had a plan. It's not like they. Uh, they immediately put they immediately put it on the map, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, they, that's a lot of the talk was about that and the chat. Um, yeah, I can't read all these. There's quite a few. Um, yeah, but just you know, they're gonna miss it, and um, plus some people are optimistic about the changes and. Um, um, I don't. I don't know. John had said that if they had kept up with the maintenance over the years, it probably would have stayed. I don't. I don't know if that really played into it or, um, or not. Yeah. But yeah, I don't think so. But all right. Um. Well, yeah, and LaughingPlace.com also covered what's the you know what's coming with the attraction. Uh, they point out that the that the ride itself will be the same length. Uh, there will be a original animation created by Walt Disney Animation Studios that will be used on screens within the attraction. Oh, nice. Um, they talk about some of the music and the, the people recording the music. Uh, yeah, of course, I don't think they're going to physically alter the, the flume that much at all. I mean, maybe they'll repair some parts of it or whatever, but I, I can't imagine, no. you know, if you if you change the flume at all, you're going to have your you're having to re-engineer a bunch of stuff not in so a year and a half i mean they have hopes to have it open by the end of next year uh, yeah by the holiday season it looks like so mm-hmm. um yeah this the attraction will have 17 new characters all represented by audio animatronics um so it says here tiana's father being a world war one veteran and what it's like for an african-american man to fight for his country back then that's part of it uh so yeah um splash is gone and <laughs> tiana's bayou adventure is on the way so right. um well of course we'll keep you updated on what's happening with that and anything yeah. else from the chat room about that mm. <laughs> not 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 too much new no um, okay. Yeah. Well, uh, Disneyland kicks off Black Music Month in June, and uh, that was another Brady McDonald story from the Orange County Register. As he points out, the Disneyland Resort will be filled with the sounds of rhythm and blues, funk, soul, jazz, gospel, reggae, and Motown throughout the month of June during the celebration of Black Music Month. Throughout June, musical groups will play the Hollywood Land stages at DCA, the Downtown Disney stage next to the Star Wars Trading Post, and the Grand California Hotel Craftsman, Craftsman Bar stage overlooking the pool. So uh, and he lists some of the acts that'll be there. Uh, that so I'd like to hear you know if anyone goes and 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 experiences that I like live music is always good at the resort um yeah yep so uh, the official disney parks blog had a story uh, disneyland resort announces the return of halloween time and plaza de la familia september 1st plus 2023 oogie boogie bash updates so of course that's coming back as they say, Halloween time materializes across the Disneyland Resort from September 1st through August 31st. If you're a big Halloween fan, that means you can get an early start on the festivities. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Each night through October 31st, the Halloween Screams Nighttime Spectacular will summon supernatural projections, special effects, and music on Main Street USA, Sleeping Beauty Castle, Rivers of America, and in front of It's a Small World. Magic Band Plus adds another devious dimension to the show 
with ominous illuminations and shivering vibrations. On select nights, fireworks will be conjured up in the skies above to make way for Halloween screams. The nighttime spectacular Wondrous Journeys is scheduled to make its last performance of the year on August 31st. Uh, as the afternoon winds down each day, the thrills go up at Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout in Avengers Campus. The attraction transforms into Guardians of the Galaxy Monsters After Dark, a scream-worthy adventure to save Groot from creatures running amok in the Collector's Fortress. Ooh. <laughs> so... And they'll have Plaza de la Familia uh, and tributes to Dia de las Muertes, uh, honoring the Mexican traditions of Dia de las Muertes, Day of the Dead. The vibrant Plaza de la Familia cultural experience will bring brilliant marigolds, heartwarming entertainment, and family crafts to Paradise Gardens in DCA. Uh, that'll be from September 1st through November 2nd. Uh, at Paradise Garden Grill, you'll be able to feast on menu items inspired by Mexican cuisine. Uh, let's see. Throughout the experience, characters and music from Disney and Pixar's Academy Award winning Coco highlight uh, eternal love and the everlasting bonds of family. So, um, yeah, if you want to read all the details again, click through. Uh, they, they talk about uh, Oogie Boogie Bash. Um, they'll take over DCA. Yeah, it's More very popular. Than ever before. Yeah, very it's, they're, they're, they're adding knights, you know, bringing rare characters, villains, and spellbinding experiences on 25 select evenings between September 5th and October 31st. Uh, wow. So, you know, um, important information here is that the tickets... Uh, <laughs> tickets will go on sale to the general public on June 29th, no earlier than 9 a.m. Pacific time. On June 27th, no earlier than 9 a.m. Pacific time, a limited amount of Oogie Boogie Bash tickets go on pre-sale for Magic Key holders. So uh, that'll be at Disneyland.com slash Oogie Boogie Bash. Mm -hmm. Ooh. <clears throat> you know, sometimes for those events you really have to act fast to get your tickets yes um, you really do um yeah they go by very fast uh we have a couple of things in the uh chat room uh keeping chat room, yeah. disney said what do you think of the event being in dca versus disneyland i haven't been to dca halloween event yet uh someone said i totally want to see that keith um Oh, Monsters After Dark is a lot of fun. Yeah, um, DCA seems to be a better environment, Keith said, especially since they can introduce scarier elements. Um, I think that it's good to have it at California Venture, too, because um, if you're not going to the party, you still have Disneyland um, to go to rather than just California Venture, where there's more to do at Disneyland. I don't know. That's my thought on it. But. Yeah. You know, I kind of wonder the resort has still has 3D theaters. Mm -hmm. You know, it's got one in DCA and one in uh, Disneyland. And I'm wondering if it'd be worth it to create like a, I don't know, a 10 minute thing that's Halloween themed for those theaters. I, right. You know, it just seems like, why not? You know? <laughs> Yeah, I, I know it, it costs money to do that, but, you know, if they could mm -hmm. advertise something, you know, for, for these two months, you can come see this, you know, this special 3D movie, you know, or, or 4D experience <laughs> as the case may be, you know. It's just, it's growing more and more in popularity. You know, when we worked there, they didn't have this type, type of event. Um, they didn't no. really celebrate well, Halloween. They, they tried, they, there were a couple of times they did an after hours thing at Disneyland. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they, it, it, I forget which years they did it, but yeah. 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 It's, it's growing in popularity. Some people say they enjoy it more than, uh, than the Christmas decor, you know, and everything they do for Christmas. Yeah. 
Well, um, Brady McDonald reported in the register that Disneyland gets jaw-dropping Groot robot ready for Guardians of the Galaxy dance party. So, uh, yeah, Disneyland is conducting play tests of technology from the Walt Disney Imagineering Research and Development Team for select theme park visitors who are shown a short presentation of the Groot audio animatronic character, Imagineering's Project Kiwi version of the young Groot audio animatronic may be coming to Avengers Campus this summer. The public first got a glimpse of the freely walking young Groot AA robot when Walt Disney Imagineering pulled back the curtain in 2021 on the secret project codenamed Kiwi that had been under wraps for years. The secretive research and development arm of Disney showcased the progress on the tandem projects for the New York Times and CNBC. The innovative costuming technology developed by Imagineering allows many sized favorites like Young Groot, Rocket Raccoon, Baby Yoda, and Winnie the Pooh to interact with visitors at Disneyland and DCA. The three foot tall Groot animatronic that waddles and coos like a toddler has cameras and sensors to help the robot roam freely and interact with people. Custom software allows the Groot robot to perform specific behaviors and convey emotions according to the New York Times. The goal, make theme park visitors believe they are meeting Groot rather than a sophisticated robot brimming with cutting edge technology. Well, thanks for spoiling it. I mean, you know, you've explained, you've explained exactly what's going on. So, you know, people won't be full. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's cool. Uh, I'm glad they yeah. always add these, these extra things. They don't have to add this kind of stuff. It doesn't make them money. It bring new guests. Really. I don't think yeah. people would go to Disneyland just specifically for this, but, um, but it's good that they have those. Right. And, and myshat.com covers that story. I think that's actually where the register might have gotten some of its information. Um, yeah. Now there's a lot of stuff going on at downtown Disney. Yeah. And myshat.com, Nathan Villamore reported that, you know, downtown Disney shakeup continues, you know, the Splitsville expansion, construction, future plans. And as it says in the story, Disneyland's downtown Disney shopping and dining district is undergoing rapid change. Nearly all of the restaurants in the zone have been replaced or updated in recent years with even more changes on the way to make way for new venues. Catal, Uva Bar and Sprinkles Cupcakes have all closed. Splitsville is expanding. A hot chicken skewer cart is now open and a number of new establishments are under construction or still on the way. So just announced the alley. Downtown Disney's least popular establishment, Splitsville Luxury Lanes, is getting an expansion this summer. The mostly empty courtyard in front of the venue will be converted into the alley. I have to say, when uh, I went to an elementary school where if people wanted to fight, they would mm -hmm. say, after school in the alley. Whoa. So, um, <laughs> so, yeah, just an early association for me. Uh, this space promises interactive games, live music, lounge areas, and dining. The alley will feature the same food and beverage options that are offered at Splitsville. There's no anticipated opening date aside from summer 2023, but we'll be checking out what's happening. Perhaps Splitsville hopes that if people see empty tables outside, they'll stop by. Generally, even if every other restaurant in downtown Disney is packed, you can still get a table here. Service and food quality are spotty for this high-priced option, not on our list of Disneyland Resort recommendations. I wonder how they really feel. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm not. This yeah. is not my stuff. I don't. I don't know. This is. I'm just quoting what's at mycechat.com. Uh -huh. And as they continue, they say, sadly, Jazz Kitchen Coastal Grill and Patio plus Beignets Express is now open. <laughs> Jazz Kit has 
finished its lackluster re-theme and now has reopened with a new coastal-inspired menu. Gone is the hyper-themed New Orleans slash Mardi Gras theme. In its place is an uninspired beige re redo <laughs> with pops of neon color. The the menu features a fusion of New Orleans style food with California flair. The prices at Jazz Kitchen have jumped along with the downgrade in theme. Mind boggling. <laughs> it the really Jazz is. Kitchen Express yeah. is, is no more. In its place, you'll find Beignets Express, which serves a variety of beignets and drinks. Gone are the savory items such as soups and sandwiches. <laughs> I, yeah, wonder, I, I wonder if people... anybody any of our patreons <laughs> yeah a lot Go of ahead. people didn't understand the uh the changes um I, yeah that, I, to me that was like one of the most pleasant you know parts yeah. of downtown disney was was that <laughs> well the theming was amazing that especially exterior. on the outside yeah the exterior but i don't know why they changed that i don't i don't understand it um how dare they get rid of all the cast iron railings? <laughs> yeah, um, what do they do with that? Is that going to end up at, at at an auction house or you know? Um... <laughs> yeah, uh, John said a new new hotel coming based on the Sweep Spot podcast. <laughs> well, Keith said my chat they isn't should... wrong. He said my chat isn't wrong. So, yeah. Well, they point out also that Clyde's Hot Chicken is now open. Uh, Sprinkles Cupcakes is closed. Ooh, so that uh, was good. what they said about um, what they said about Sprinkles Cupcake is that if you're looking for a cupcake, your options in downtown Disney have narrowed. The Sprinkles Cupcakery closed without notice on April 11th. That leaves just the substandard cupcakes at Marceline's <laughs> as an alternative. Prior to March 2020, Marceline's had a pretty good lineup of items and quality, but that is no longer the case. <laughs> oh, my god. They're gosh. honest. They're honest. Yeah. Um, you know, I'd like more options. I think I like the idea of more options at Downtown Disney where you can just walk up and grab food where you don't have to have reservations or as maybe not as expensive. And so yeah. when they had mentioned that they got rid of that express window, well, the, the window's there, but it's um, beignets is not the savory, you know, more um, like food items. Then uh, that's just one less place where yeah. at the last minute you need to go grab some food and you're, you know, I know there's other options, but as far as like walk up window stuff. Yeah. Right. Well, laughingplace.com had some coverage of it. Uh, Luke Manning had one with the headline, Disneyland shares updated menu and new look inside Jazz Kitchen, Coastal Grill, and Patio. And that story has, uh, it points out, the update to the Jazz Kitchen is just one part of a major overhaul to downtown Disney, drawing inspiration from Southern California mid-century mid modern architecture. The west end of downtown Disney will become a beautiful blend of vibrant color palettes, design elements, and patterns influenced by the region, and will include an open lawn for relaxation and future events, and an even broader and diverse collection of dining and shopping. Well, that's optimistic. Um, you know, right. we'll see. Uh, the register, Brady McDonald cover, it says that downtown Disney transformation eyes a Thanksgiving 2024 opening as construction begins. Um, Disney, uh, let's see, work expect, expected to be complete by late 2024. Bull bulldozers and excavators are busy on the former AMC lot where work crews have installed cement slabs, rebar supports, steel frames and concrete block walls for new downtown Disney buildings. And that uh, Disneyland Resort President Ken Potrock said at the OC Forum in May that the downtown Disney transformation be done in 18 months. That would be just in time 
for the Christmas 2024 shopping season. So if they if they do if they open up Tiana's Bayou Adventure, I could, I could see them doing like a a press event that you know mm -hmm. honors both. You know the Downtown Disney uh, overhaul and the uh, Tiana's Bayou Adventure thing at the same time. Yeah, you know. Yeah, we shall see. Sense. Yeah. Well, uh, I did mention in my trip reports, uh, I think they were mostly on the bonus episodes. Uh, you know, we used a three day ticket for this spring. Um, and guess what? Discounted Disneyland tickets for California residents return this summer. So, wow, for uh, the summer. Would you have ever imagined that? Yeah, yeah. that's kind of that's weird. Um, this is the Orange County Register reporting from Brady McDonald. Disneyland is bringing back discounted multi-day ticket offers for California residents in the middle of summer, just as the kids are getting out of school and the vacation season kicks into high gear. Uh, so it says beginning Tuesday, June 6th, which is off, obviously behind us, California locals can purchase um, $249 three-day single park tickets that allow access to either Disneyland or DCA on weekdays or $299 three-day tickets good on weekends as well. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty good deal for the typically pricey tickets with the weekday tickets running $83 per day and the weekend tickets costing $100 per day. By comparison, the lowest price single day ticket costs $104 while the highest price tickets cost $179. Upgrades are available for park hopper ticket and to add the Genie Plus line cutting perk. Um, Not a bad deal. He does say you'll need to make advanced reservations to use the discount tickets. The weekday tickets are good Monday through Thursdays. The weekend tickets are good seven days a week. The three-day tickets can be used on non-consecutive days. And the 2023 California discount tickets can be redeemed from Monday, June 12th through September 28th. The discount tickets can be purchased at Disneyland or by calling 866-572-7321. Or so, by contacting me. Cont yes, I, sh I, sh I shouldn't have given that number. Uh, <laughs> go through Lynn, everybody. Uh, but, you know, so what's happening here is basically Southern California residents have a different price than everybody else. Because if you're going to do, if you're going to make these offers for most of the year, obviously, obviously they're not going to do it, you know, they're not going to do it the last two weeks of the year. But if every spring and now summer and maybe even in the fall, you know, I don't know if they're going to do it in the fall. They might. Fall is usually um, one of its most popular time now, it seems like. Well, now with the ho with all the Halloween stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if, if you're a Southern California, resident, Southern California resident and you don't want to buy an annual pass, I don't know. You buy one of these tickets, you know, because um, you would go – if you bought one for the – the first part of the year and you buy one for the summer then that's six visits yeah you can get the enchant for 6.99 so um that's what hundred dollars more and then you'll get discounts and stuff i don't know something to think about just make yeah whatever makes sense for people you know yeah um you know, contact Lynn and have Lynn do your plans for you. I can explain um, that to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, you you can go to the official Disney Parks blog coverage of that, you know, with all the multitude of disclaimers and legalese that they pack in at the end. Um, so, uh, yeah. And uh, Mice Chat is covering that too. So, you know, they do a pretty good job of explaining things. Um and now micechat.com did have a couple of updates as they always do these are very heavy in photographs uh and stuff like that so if you want to get a close-up look at what everything you know what's going on at the resort on a visual perspective 
you can do that. There was a Disneyland update, the final splashdown, Pixar preview, and more mermaid. That was uh, from Nathan Villamore. That was from May 29th. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so he, they have the, the final countdown for Splash Mountain is part of that. Um, and then Dusty Sage had an update uh, on June 5th. Disneyland update secret test Adventureland mess Splash at rest. So... <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's it, that starts out saying Disneyland has one less mountain to call home. Last week, Splash Mountain took its final dive into the Briar Patch, and while we'll miss Splash, we're also looking forward to something new down on the Bayou. And there's a lot of new going on and all around the Disneyland Resort. Come along with us as we take a closer look at an amazing new animatronic, soon to delight guests of Aven at Avengers Campus. A messy situation in Adventureland, major construction, and much more. Well, she, he references the mess in Adventureland. There was it was on Saturday, oh, yeah. um, mm -hmm. and I believe it was piping from the chiller plants that chill the water. That's what I heard. Uh, yeah, I guess the pipes the pipes burst or something, which affected a lot of things. So there were a lot of venues and you know attractions and restaurants that you know had to be would be evacuated or you know the adventureland entrance was blocked off and uh yeah quite an issue <laughs> you know yeah but, you know um, uh disneyland's old and uh a lot of that stuff yeah, we don't uh, know how how old are, we don't know how old these these piping is you know it could be did they replace it at some time in the last so many years i mean who knows you know yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you want to yeah. read those, though, go to thesweepspot.com and click through and you can get the full thing. I'm wondering if there's anything more in the chat room uh, that we would like to mention. By the way, people, if you join our Patreon, you can join in on these chats once a month. Yeah. No, they're just talking about a variety of uh, items, but it looks like they're having a good time. So, yeah, if you'd like to join in, uh, join our Patreon and you can uh, join in the fun. Um, yeah, it uh, sounds great. Um, John John said they will be selling lightning lanes for the restroom soon. And then uh, <laughs> Michael said that was Chapex next plan. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. my. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did... Uh, are you going to, do you have any uh, refurb information for us? I do. And wow, do I. Okay. Oh boy. See, before I start with this, this time of year, the refurb list would be very small. Uh, maybe one thing, it might be like a, a sh store or a restaurant or something, but yeah. not even that really. Um, so I don't know what's going on. And why these things are happening during this time period, especially around a holiday. Um, but I'll continue and you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. So Alice in Wonderland is down and it will return on June 16th. But hmm. then it's going to go back down again July 5th. And then we'll reopen July 21st. Yeah. So it's kind of off and on over the next two months. Um, Mr. Toad is down and returns June 16th. Peter Pan is down and will return June 30th. Dumbo down for one day, July 3rd, Ken. Hmm. Which is weird because that's on a Monday and, you know, the 4th of July is on a Tuesday. So it it's technically kind of like part of that holiday weekend, that Monday. Right, right. right. There's probably going to be a lot of people hmm. who... Have taken mm -hmm. Monday off and made a big weekend out of it. Right. It's just really odd. Um, the monorail, which might have something to do with uh, the downtown Disney construction, is down July 5th and no return date at this point. <clears throat> Another mm -hmm. popular attraction is going to be down um, soaring around the world. It's down uh, July 5th to the 15th. So 10 days there. Another popular one, Toy Story Midway Mania, down July 17th and no return date. 
Hmm. It's really odd, right? Well, it's more of a year-round uh, resort now, you know? Yeah, yeah. I just feel like, you know, maybe January, February would have been better, but um, <laughs> maybe they were trying to get the crowds in gen in that time period, and this would even, you know, crowds are generally lower January, February, and if these things were down during that time, then even less people would come. I don't know. Well, and also with, with Midway Mania, with, with the Web Slingers open, mm -hmm. uh, there's less pressure on Midway Mania because they're very similar attractions. Right. I know not in, not in theme, but, you know, in the in just the premise of them, the experiences of them. Right. So, you know, they're, they're both interactive. They use the same kind of ride system. Um, mm -hmm. I think there's less pressure to, to have it open. So... Yeah, Christine said that summer and fall have flipped places for the off-season title, it seems. Yeah, I mean, when you look at everything that's happening in the fall, you know, all the Halloween stuff, uh, mm -hmm. they start the Christmas stuff early. Uh, you know, it's a, it's, they're really making a push on that. Yeah. It's very strange. Um, all right, well... Uh, that wraps up our current events, but a uh, couple of things here as we do our outro. I wanted to um, add in that, uh, you know, I always talk about concierge and you can book with me, but I want to add something else to it too, that uh, it doesn't cost anything extra to book with me. Um, and it, there's a lot of benefits to it. And I can book as much as you want on your trip or just, a little bit you know if you want to be a part of that you can join in in the planning part and we can discuss things or if you just want me to do all the planning i can do that so uh yeah just definitely uh contact me and we can uh work out some things and i give you some quotes how would they ideas. contact you lynn they can contact me at uh my email is l baron l b a r r o n at concierge, C-O-N-C-I-E-A-R-S dot com. Or you can just contact me through the sweet spot, also sweet spot at gmail.com, whatever uh, way you can remember best. Um, but yeah, uh, check out our website, thesweetspot.com for all the show notes. Um, don't forget about the Jim Corcus uh, GoFundMe. We should have a link in the show notes and, and possibly on the website for that. So look out for that. Um, we've also and, posted uh, it on social media. So look for that. Yes. Don't, don't forget about Jim. Uh, we also have, uh, you know, we do these episodes every two weeks. And then the alternate weeks, we do the topical episodes. Mm -hmm. So we had a topical episode last week. We're going to have another one next week. The best way to keep track of all that is to subscribe to the subscribe. podcast. It's a free subscription. You just subscribe mm -hmm. somewhere, wherever you listen, like Apple Podcasts or on Google or, or whatever. You subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss an episode. Yeah, I wanted to mention about the subscribe is I noticed that on Apple Podcast app, it's called follow. So follow, subscribe, whatever uh, that means on the platform you're listening to. We're on um Spotify, um, you know, Heart iHeartRadio, iTunes, Google Podcasts. So I think pretty much wherever podcasts are found, if if there is a platform you prefer and we're not on that, just contact me at sweetspot at gmail.com and I'll look into adding that to that platform. All right. Well, thank you for listening and we'll talk to you next time.